He only has one name, and I have the name. So I can't point elsewhere to say his will. The minute I say his will, I'm divorced from God. So I ask myself, what do you want, Neville? Now, because the whole vast world is yourself pushed out, you aren't going to injure anyone. But you can't deny that you still desire. You want something, so you want it. Well, you assume that you have it. And then let things happen. If it takes a thousand or ten thousand to aid the birth of that assumption, then they'll be used. And they'll be used either knowingly or unknowingly. But if I have to wait to say, is it God's will, I'll wait forever. I'll wait forever. Is it God's will that I should pay rent or be dispossessed? Well, then if I'm going to wait and say, well, now let him tell me first, because maybe some friend will say, you know, you need that experience. You need humility. You need all this thing to be fired out. I have had it. I don't need to learn the same lesson twice. Oh, I've had that. When I thought God's will and allow him to do it, and I sat down and did nothing, then came the end of the month, and you can't pay rent. The landlady said, you know, I can't carry you any longer. Out you go. I have had that experience by waiting for God to tell me what to do. He never told me. I had to do it. And so when I got married, I knew I had an obligation to life. I had another one. Then came a child. I have another one. It's my obligation to have some external being tell me now, no, I know what I have to do. Put her through school, all right. Can you make college? You want to, all right. Then it's my obligation to put her through college, which I did. But if I waited for some external being to talk to me to say, well, maybe she shouldn't go. It'd be easier on you. I'm passing the buck. The whole vast world passes the buck. No, my dear, make your decision. Even if you're wrong, make a decision. Or you learn by it. But to be undecided, so that you will not make a mistake. Well, you know that sto a story, in, it's in the Revelation. Would that you were hot or cold, but because you're neither hot nor cold, and that you are lukewarm, I spew you out. You can't make coffee or tea with lukewarm water. Let it be hot or cold. Let man be intense. You know, the people who have opposed me and said, Neville, I think you're a nut. I think you're as insane as they come. Oh, I've been told that time and again. Those who really oppose me become my best students. But those who come and say, oh, I think you're wonderful. First time that they hear you, I think you're wonderful. Never come back. But those who say, I think that man is insane. I have had them I, in 49th Street in New York City. I came on two ladies. One lady was showing the other tongue friend all about New York City. And a big picture of mine was in the window with my books. And one said, you know who he is? And she said, no. But he is the mad mystic of 48th Street. Oh, you've got to go and hear him. You've got to go and hear him. He's as mad as a hatter. We all go to hear him because he's so mad. It's fun, she said. It's fun. Go and hear. Sit down, cost you nothing. In those days, it was all a voluntary effort on their part. And so a thousand people would come three times a week to hear the mad mystic of 48th Street. But those who heard and thought, no, he really is insane. And they would challenge me from the platform, in front of the audience. They became good students. Those like the ones on the street who just said, we the mad mystic, go and have fun. They never became students. They loved their little icons. And they prayed to the little icon. He never answered them, but nevertheless, they prayed anyway, in hope. 